I'm not sure. That is, that I, is classic Keith. I'm to still trip confused. over one wire and manage to take and bring down the whole system. Or whatever. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like, yeah, everything just got completely jacked up somehow. If, if, if revolution, <laughs> revolutions could go for countries as easily as it did for you tripping over one fucking wire. <laughs> <laughs> it's like why is my yeah. microphone outside right now <laughs> i'm surprised you caught it because i just would have kept talking oh well i'm not even sure how i oh you said googly eyes that's yeah. what it, yeah i fucked it up with the googly we eyes. had the i mean we got the yeah. serious serious googly yeah. eyes going on all right so googly eyes all right enough of that silliness all right just do the introduction just like you did all right so um I've been watching this uh, news feed from, I think it was uh, last week, mid last week, early last week. And you've got this guy, Ned Price, from the State Department. And he's talking about um, the Russians are going to produce this, this crazy ass, crazy film yeah. with um, bad actors in it and some other crazy stuff destroying uh, nice. military vehicles and stuff like that. And what I found most interesting was when he was asked about um, how how did you come about this information mm -hmm. or what the information was about or where uh, there was no proof of it. And when he did say proof, it was like, well, I just said it. So I'm kind of. Yeah, well, his his big thing that I saw with that is he basically said, well, it came from this previously de declassified information. Well, it got super awkward because the news guy or whatever was asking the question said hey i've been doing this for a long time you could tell that he was asking is there like show me where that information was in other words show me like a link to the previously declassified information that you're basing this off of because well, guy asked the question simple question was like uh you're using things like terms like crisis actors oh yeah that's very specific it's well, then he then the then the journalist says something about this is straight out of Alex Jones. Okay. Because I like Alex, Alex Jones, Jones to an extent, also but. <laughs> uses things like the terms crisis actor. Oh gosh, you think it was Alex Jones is setting all this up? Well, no, I'm just saying crisis, crisis actors meaning like it's somebody that's doing some yeah. kind of in this yeah, case, it's like Hollywood a, like it's, a state sponsored uh uh state sponsored video or whatever like a, it's a staged event is where, yeah. is where you use the term crisis actor yeah exactly words. and and that's right. sort of thing too it's like well um, the government totally disavowed anything like they were like mocking the term crisis actor so it's funny that now you have somebody from the state department that's now using the term crisis actor when they're talking about right yeah russia right i mean and it's like let's not point fingers about anything, but let's go back to Kennedy and Operation Northwoods, which was a supposedly staged event. The you know Bay of Pigs invasion, the Gulf of Tonkin from Vietnam. Oh, that it, wasn't it rings staged. a lot of bells about like staged. Us staging events. <laughs> you know the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that I fought in that war, right? right yeah. Um, they so America's not. We were let's let's get off our high horse there for a second <laughs> and about like staging set events to basically initiate a war with another country. Right. Right. Yeah. I would like to know the big picture. I would like to know what the outcome is, is why are we so vested in Ukraine? Well, um, I think there's a lot of reasons why we, we are vested in you. I mean, actually, I think the better questions would be is why for many, many years. Has uh, the U.S., um, Europe, NATO been pumping money into the Ukraine? Which, I mean, Ukraine is probably, what is it, like the second largest uh, country out of that block? Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, uh, I think their their GDP might be only like maybe a uh, hundred. And let's just say, I could be wrong. Again, look yeah. these things up. I, I think uh, Ukraine's GDP is only like maybe 158 million. Uh, let's just say 200 million. Yeah. Billion, sorry, not million, billion. Well, that's my point is. And like, that's kind of what, pushing it. But the U.S. and other countries are pumping at least a quarter of their GDP into them for defense. And so what are we defending against exactly? Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. Okay, when the, when the Soviet Union fell, right, basically Russia went tits up. Uh -huh. And all these, 
you know, former Russian republics broke off, right? I understand, like, it's it's always been a NATO thing versus, like, a Warsaw Pact thing. A Russian, Russia and its supporters were, like, Warsaw Pact, whatever. No, cold, and I, you cold, know what? Cold I, War stuff. I fully right? understand. I fully understand NATO, and yeah. I fully understand Warsaw. I understand why they have those groups, which makes sense. Well, in the military, we call it establishing a foothold, right? So, in other words, if you go into a combative action, right, you want to run to the closest building, in a, some complex that you're fighting in in Iraq or whatever, you establish a foothold. It's a jumping off point for, for further actions. So right. we want something as close to the action as possible that we can secure and we, we can maintain for ourselves. Yeah. It's called establishing a foothold, right? It's a tactic. Yeah, why would is, you not? Is the Ukraine a, a foothold? Like, you know, in other words, we feel like we can get a foot into, it's like the Cuban Missile, missile Crisis, right? Russia, oh like Cuba, and threaten to put nuclear weapons on Cuba because it's 90 miles off the coast of Florida. Yeah. Right? We, in turn, what nobody ever talks about is the fact that at the same time, we were putting missiles in Turkey pointed towards Russia because we also wanted that same distance close to them. Well, right? I think that might be Russia's argument right now is the fact that we're placing um, missile systems extremely close to them. Well, yeah, that's, but, I mean, it's, it's yeah, not I mean, explaining the troop buildup you know, that they're doing. We've creeped up like on that. them and started getting things, you know, for everything that they've done, we've countered it with something. That's a, that's a cold war tactic. So, you know, it's dating back to like uh, the Korean war where we took South Korea and the Russians took, you know, North Korea. We had East and West Germany during World War II. That were West Germany or you know whatever right. yeah you know one side took one side you know we took the other we which like was kind of crappy though because nobody considered um, the people that actually had to live there uh, I, I unfortunately agree. I mean yeah, it was a, I agree in my opinion I mean, it was a complete we talked about those on, show, on previous so. podcasts about North Korea is now supported by China for the most part right yeah. and they you know become the Herbert Kingdom and whereas the South Koreans have been supported by the United States I was stationed there for a year on the militarized zone in the army. And they are very westernized or whatever. Yeah. Kind of like we were talking about off the podcast about like you build some roads there. And if you're playing, you're playing chess and not playing checkers. If oh, you yeah. Start yeah. supporting their infrastructure. They and they they look at other countries like, say, for example, if you, you know, you go to the Ukraine and you said, hey, we support you. And we start saying, hey, we're going to pump some money into your infrastructure. Right. And you're no longer going to be like a former Republic of Russia that had a war factory there that lives on, you know, two rubles a fucking year. Right. Yeah. And we have, you know, you have a stockpile of former, you know, Soviet nuclear weapons and had, nobody's gotten paid for a year. The guards that are there hadn't gotten paid for a year. We'll give you money. We'll help you rebuild your stuff. We'll bring in McDonald's or whatever it is. Right. <laughs> Who doesn't like McDonald's? If we support you and start, you know, we start p paying the little money that it takes to pump money into their infrastructure to make them, well, one day it's suddenly it's better than what it was before. So, yay, America. We start pumping some, you know, Levi's jeans in there like we did in, in <laughs> oh, post Germany, you know. <laughs> That's funny you said that because yeah. Germany, Germany loves Levi jeans. I, I don't I'm know why. That, literally, we pump, you know, it's one I of those things. Like Levi's, but, yeah. So, is that our angle? Is that we, are trying to get establish a foothold and get a jump off point. And we don't want, we don't, we would, we don't want Russia to go back to the Soviet Union. We don't want them to scoop up all those former well, Eastern Bloc Soviet countries. Yeah, no, no, I think that's, uh, I think that's the idea is to prohibit um, Russia from being the old Soviet Union. At the same time, though, I think there's also some bad actors in the government right now that are making money off of it or have made they money off have of been. it, which, Again, yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, it's going to happen. It's just it's I mean, a thing. Dare I say it? It's you know, when I was in Iraq, there's things like Halliburton, DynCorp, like all these things. You had Chain, Chain, Dick Cheney was like the uh, used to be on the board of of like Halliburton. Wait, are we allowed to talk about him yet? Has it has it been long enough? I too uh, all soon. I know is we don't know KBR, Kellogg, Brown and Root. You know all these things that that happen. They made their war profiteers. Yeah. 
Well, right? so and I'll probably cancel the shit out of us for talking about this, but <laughs> that's truth. <laughs> nobody wants to talk about the you know the war profiteers. No, nobody does. You it's know. a bad thing, which I I fully understand, but it I happens mean, and it should be brought to light. But yeah. it's really hard to bring to light, and a lot of people they don't understand it. Or when you tell them about it, they're going to be like, "You guys are." crazy tinfoil hat people which is like okay you know what um either look it up for yourselves research it or you know what? just call me crazy well, i, I mean, really don't care if you want to go way off the deep end there okay every war has spurred the economy that we've ever gotten into every war that we've ever gotten into has spurred the economy yes, somehow that right? is that is true politicians when they're not doing so well they start losing favor one, it promotes nationalism. In other words, it, all these divides that we have, the BLMs, the all these things, the uh, you know, racism and all this stuff that we're all the problems that we're having suddenly fall right. by the wayside because now we have a common enemy. The whole country rallies together towards Iraq. Well, see, Afghanistan. I think that's uh, what this. Uh, wait, hold on, Ned Flanders. Ned, no, Ned Price, not Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders, I think he's from, <laughs> from Ned Simpsons. Maybe he is Ned Flanders. Okay, I don't know. well, you know, I'm just going to call yeah. him Ned Flanders. Anyway, so Ned Flanders from the State Department um, made this claim. And if you watch his face while he's talking about it, um, he's obviously, he's either hiding something, he's lying, or he's not being truthful. There's something really weird I, going I, on Honestly, there. I think I think it goes back to your first thing where he basically was given a narrative and told to, to say it. All right, so he got a boot to the ass and was just shoved well, out. Well, I mean, in front if of you are, to, if you are the face of the State Department, or if, if for whatever reason why is you happen he to the be the face of the State Department. Well, if you happen to be the guy, he looked that, like a toddler. If you're like the White House, <laughs> I think he the was White a House toddler. spokesperson, right? Okay. Which is probably the most horrible job I could think you. Possibly, I think it is because yeah. the last two we've had, so a lot of people made fun of. Um, yeah, good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. That's Honestly, the, and the thing it is, there's nothing against them. They're they're handed a script. Yeah, right? they're just their problem is though is they they can't it. possibly. They're trying to find the best person that can answer a question, the off key questions, or handle it the best. Because what if, I can give you a script. This is gonna be insane. What if they just told the truth? Oh, I agree. I mean, but I'm just saying, if you're given a script and you're thrown out there in front of the crowd. Oh, yeah. Just right. Feeding that person the lions. And they say, hey, we're going to make this announcement. Here's the announcement. And they print it off on like two pieces of paper. Right. Yeah. You cannot possibly have answers to everything when you don't have a, in other words, if you don't have a state controlled media that's not also yeah. fed questions. Oh, yeah. So if we were like China, then yeah. he would have done great. Awesome. Probably. Right. Yeah. They would have took that as fact. They would have ran it on all the state sponsored whatever. Problem is here in America is we're got questioned. Ja we're jackasses and we're gonna ask tough questions, or we should now. No, granted, so I thought yeah. that part was amazing was actually somebody from the press actually oh, yeah, questioned. I, I feel what like he was that saying. we did have a state sponsor media for a while, and we still for the most part do. But somebody went off script. Yeah, I know, right? Right. <laughs> and he asked him the question. Well, here's the thing is if you're thrown out in the front. To with this two page thing of of what we're going to announce, mm -hmm. you can't possibly have like on that two pages. You're not going to possibly have the answers to all the questions. No, and that's honestly, uncontrolled. I don't, I don't see how that guy asks, could have possibly right? even had the answers to. And the funniest those thing with that journalist is he just basically asked it a asked the question because the right. guy was referencing previously unclassified material. Right, yeah. Which is super weird because I just don't think they unclassify stuff that quickly from my military experience. No, and that's one of the weird parts. Um, like, well, it's been declassified. Yeah. You have access to it. It's like, where's it at? And he could not answer yeah, that Yeah, and he question, kept saying, I just so. told you, right? And I think, well, obviously, what the reporter was saying is, can you, sh do you have a link to the document on right, the yeah. State Department's website that where it's, where it's declassified and it says what your mm -hmm. precursors in other words, what your information that led up to this information is you're right. saying it's all based on that previous information. Right. That was his big question was he's like, OK. Um, you're making allegations right now. On things that haven't happened yet. Right. What has happened to make you so bold to make accusations? 
Yeah. No, like but, you would think that at this point, like you just don't go haphazardly throw allegations out without having some serious no, backing to it. I don't right? think you would, but at the same thing, same time too, I think maybe it's possible that it was one of those things where they hoped that nobody would deep dive into it. Actually, oh, yeah. Yeah, the, well, that I wasn't mean, even a deep dive. That they, was just a, they, that was a dip brother, your toes into the water. The dice, they rolled the dice and they <laughs> lost. Well, yeah. I and like on did. top of all that, this guy that's supposed to be the face of this, you know, the, the public speaker for the, the State Department. I honestly think that he had that like deer in the headlight. Yeah, he should not he, have been put in that it situation. It was like, you know, never in a million years where I thought somebody would actually ask me where the website was for the previous these classified right, information, yeah. right? And he's like, well, I just, I, I am the law. I told yeah, you. Yeah. And then it, then on top of all that, he was like uh, talking about, you know, it, them basically staging something. Right. Yeah. And he said, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, uh, journalist calls him out and says, this sounds like some Alex Jones stuff. Okay, so again, yeah, Alex Jones, man, he has some whacked out ideas. He does, but at the same time, Alex Jones, I hate to say this, he hits, he gets, he, he gets, gets a, it he gets right a, so many yeah, he times. He gets a home run though. once in a while. I was like, wow, yeah. darn it, he gets a home he run was, once in a while. You know what? Now, I, that being said, I would though, love, you know what, if we could just sit down with Alex Jones sometime. Oh yeah, that'd for be, like three or four yeah. hours, oh, have yeah. some. I don't know. I have man, some I Elijah love Craig. I love and that we just passion, out. man. I love that guy's no, he passion. Is. He gets fired up, man. He's just like me. He gets fired up about stuff like that. <laughs> That's amazing. Too. So, but, and he has a reason. He has a place he's coming from. Yeah. But so having a reason in a place you're coming from, the guy from the State Department, he had no place he was coming from and no reason except for, in my mind, it felt like he's just talking out his ass. Somebody kicked him out in front of the, uh, the spotlight That's what I said. and like read this yeah. script and just go with it. But as soon as he got questioned, he had nowhere to go with it. You can again, watch his body language. And yeah. Well, he, I'll, I'll splice that's the a clip classic in example again, is I, like I maybe can, inner office politics. Somehow he was sucking up in that day. Man, he, he, maybe, what, maybe, though? maybe he was on, he, maybe they saw him like a day earlier on some PowerPoint presentation that he gave <laughs> Power, and he just, <laughs> he just, he just, mur he just murdered, that. he just murdered that PowerPoint investigation. Right. He made, he made the world's best yeah. pie chart. And he did. Or and so they're effort. like, you know what? <laughs> you, you are going to be our spokesman. You, and then, and then he probably got overconfident because then they gave him like the two sheets and they were like, Hey, can you, can you, can oh, you hit gosh. a home run with this? You know what? That may have and happened. He, and he did yeah. the old classic. Gave him a wink and was like, <laughs> I got you, bro. He's like, I'm going to wink my I, way through this. I got you, bro. Oh, I can geez. handle this. Right. What he did not anticipate <laughs> and where the whole I got you, bro, fell by the wayside is when the old boy said, this sounds like some Alex Jones stuff. Where can I get this information right, at? Exactly. Somebody I mean, went to him and was like, all right, I'm going to give you the Magnum condoms. Fill it. And yeah. he's like, oh, shit. Nope. I can't fill the Magnum condom. Yeah, no. Can I get the... Snugger fits. Yeah. They're super well, and small. The, the whole point of the stage thing too, is he said it like he had a, a, an air, a, an air of arrogance. Like, no, it was, it like was the United arrogant. States has never, like the United States has never done anything like that before. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, he did it. He did it basically like he basically said that he, these people are terrible. Because they're going to stage something, and we're, it's going to get it's going to give them the right to invade the Ukraine. They're terrible people for doing that. That's what I got from it. That's um, you know, that's kind of what I got from it. Yeah. At the same time, though, I think we're we're dumping some gasoline on the fire. Oh, I agree. But again, you know, if you forget history, it's destined to repeat itself. Us in the United States shouldn't be pointing fingers so much with. <laughs> The history no, of no, we definitely should yeah, not be with the history of like fingers. the Gulf of Tonkin, and uh, again, I, I'm referring to all these historical facts. No, which I think right? is awesome, but uh, um, why? Why is it that mainstream news, mainstream media, mainstream anybody is not pointing towards these things? I don't know. So well, the thing of it what is, happens is, you, is we got to be comfortable like, with your faults. We look like we're right? lunatics when we when we broadcast this, when we put it out there. Yeah. And a lot of people, they're not going to look into it. They're just going to be like, oh, those guys are crazy. But yeah. then at the same time, if they actually looked into like, oh, crap, that has happened in the past. It's happened before. And it's playing out right about now. It's like, 
I mean, let's not, you know, let's, let's not bring up the fact of the weapons of mass destruction, (laughs) which was a, you know, you know, precursor to the war I went to in Iraq. Well, I think a lot of people, and we found no weapons of mass destruction. There was weapons of mass destruction. There was, well, the U.S. went and mass destructed a whole entire country. Okay, well, no, we actually did find like certain things while we were there, um, but they were not what you consider, you know, precursors to invading another country. Okay, well, see, and that's the other weird thing. Um, and well, we'll what hop we did off do this is point make here in a second, but private individuals made a shitload of money off of the war. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, that, oh that man, I'm, I'm ruffling some feathers right now. We we most likely are probably going to get demonetized <laughs> or even kicked off of YouTube for. Yeah, we'll probably get arrested. because you know, I mean, that. dare I say it, the truth hurts sometimes, right? No, the, the truth and and does I am hurt. I am by no means you know anti-American or you know talking down about. The problem no, is I'm you got to recognize the fact that you've made a mistake and just not do it anymore. Right. Yes. Exactly. Or in this case, glass houses. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't <laughs> right. don't go calling out the you know the Russians mm-hmm. on you know doing some kind of what they think may happen with some crisis actors and all this, which is hilarious that they use the term crisis actors. Hilarious. Yeah, that, was, that was that was so Hollywood. Is like, well, they really? were that they basically That's the made best that you guys like, could do. You know, they made up. They basically said people were crazy if they use the term crisis actors or like active shooter situations at schools. And all this kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure. I mean, the crisis actor thing. I I thought came from Alex Jones. Uh, I literally thought it came from Alex Jones when he was talking about the. I can't remember one of the active shooter situations that happened. The school shooter things that happened. Man, I don't know. I'd have and, to look uh, into that. Did he get shut down for that? Yeah, I'm saying that. Word? Yeah, he was basically. He was. <laughs> they made him sound like a horrible person because he used this term like crisis actors, and he like. There was some kind of weird thing where. There's a bunch of memes going around on Facebook of showing like all these pictures of what yeah. they thought was the same person at whatever series, which whatever happened at school shootings. Apparently they, they no longer exist because <laughs> we had a whole boatload of them for a while. Well, ask Jen Pasamanaki and she will tell you that that's not a thing. Yeah, well. She will. And, I, and again, I'm not taking anything away from, I mean. You know, I, I spent many years teaching law enforcement. I was an active shooter instructor, patrol response to an active shooter. So by no means do is not not a serious thing, and it's not a no, real it thing. Is, it's beyond a serious thing. It's, I'm um, just saying, if you put emphasis on certain things, or if that's all you see in the mainstream media, you're going to feel like whatever that incident is is happening every other day. Right. Yeah. And statistically wise. Nothing has changed. It's just not getting reported on. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's it's kind of so, um, so Joe, she'll get up in the morning and um, sometimes hopefully I follow behind her and we're like, hey, how's it going? And she'll say, hey, did you hear about the news? And I'm like, what news? And it's always doom and gloom. It's just, it's just craziness. It's like, well, two more people got murdered by <clears throat> certain people. And I was like, well, that's not a surprise by any means. But when you think about it, it's like, actually, you know, that's not a surprise because it happens, what, every probably two seconds out of the day. But well, the news, that's all they're going to. Brother, they figured out a long time can ago. Can we get, where's the puppy dog news channel? Well, the problem is, is they figured out a long awesome. time ago. You remember like when we were kids, even in like the 90s, they would have the reporters coming on. And they were talking about some local you know, chili cook off. Mm-hmm. Right. And they were reporting that chili cook it off in Indianapolis. And they're all, they have like a reporter out there and they're sh- breaking him into them live every once in a while <laughs> out there. And they're like, this chili's pretty good. Chili right. cook off. Right. That does not get as much ratings or as views in our day and age and with the algorithms and whatnot as the doom and gloom. Oh goodness! So are you? It's like the clickbaity headlines and all that kind of so stuff. So it's kind of like why. we've yeah. all gone towards Hunger Games, where some of us are like Hunger Games are bad, and then other people are like, no, we want to see people get just murdered and destroyed. You well, know, that's I mean, probably about it, right. We're, we're going to the simple to social media terms of enge- like the term engagement. Engagement in social media terms is used as like how many people react to this. Like they don't even have to watch the video. They just have to click on it 
and maybe they click off of it. Right, they don't like yeah. the sound of the person's voice is talking or whatever. But the fact that they interacted that with that as an engagement, they have found, dare I say it, us as human creatures will see two headlines. The old Indianapolis chili cook-off happening today, and it's got a video with it, or the one right below it, and it says, two dead on the east side. Guess once, guess which one is going to have more <laughs> likes, clicks, well, interactions. That's kind of sad because I would rather hear about the chili. Can I have some good chili? Well, the problem is, is mainstream media is dying. Man, they should it, be because they're not dying. reporting news. They're making up news. They they're are. They they are. A, the they are the. They're the they're koi garbage. fish that's in your little pond. Well, that's no. managed on a hot summer day. Has managed <laughs> to flop itself out on the cement sidewalk. <laughs> And it's like flopping, right? And it's breathing its last, you know, breath of air. Well, and it's going to do whatever it has to do to survive. In I this case, I don't feel bad for them. Yeah. They've done it to themselves. I mean, again, I, I mean, I was getting super dramatic about this, but it, it's, it's, it's a proven fact that the engagements on social media have changed the way social media, or, you know, in this case, like mainstream media, it's more engaging. They get more response from anger. Than they do likes, like in other words, in other words, feel good stuff does not get the same engagements as stuff that's going to ruffle your feathers. Man, that's you where know, the whole clickbait, that's yeah. where the whole clickbait, putting a something underneath a, a title underneath a video that's maybe completely false. Right. There's whole social media influencers that's made whole influencer careers about, you know, my girlfriend, you know, bends over. You know, and they're like, people are like, I want to see that. Girlfriend. So and they click on it and, you know, and it'll have like the snapshot of the, of the, you know, the headlining video of her like bending over and, you know, starting to bend over in a Ferrari <laughs> right. or something. And you're like, I want to watch that. And they click on it <laughs> and it never shows anything. It's the uh, next thing you know, he's talking about some new Lamborghini got. Right. And that picture, that still picture is her doesn't show anything. She just sits down in the passenger seat. Right. Which is kind of sad, too. It's like, why did you click on that? Because well, if you really want to see somebody are, yeah, doing we, that. We are then... filthy animals. So, you know, <laughs> we, I am the guy that's going to click on that. Right. <laughs> oh, no. I, Don't I, click we're on filthy that. animals. Right. <laughs> and I'm my own worst enemy. We are our own worst enemy. But if that you have true. that video next to a video of some guy with the 4-H fair, you know, even though the some, you know, they're or they're doing some rally. For some kids, it's got leukemia mm -hmm. and it's got some video of like a parade of them driving to, you know, cars driving by with the support. It will get 200 views. And then, right. it, and then the lady possibly bending over into the Ferrari <laughs> will get like a million five views. Right. Yeah. I don't right? understand how that happens. I but. mean, I, I, you know. I mean, I could go, I could dive real deep and say that, you know, that literally goes back to like, you ever seen the movie Faces of Death? Or oh, the, yeah. Basically yeah. Like the, like the original one. Yeah. Yeah. It was stupid. And it was like, you know, basically a bunch of people dying or something yeah. horrible, banned in like a lot I of think places. The worst part of that was the monkey getting yeah. smacked on top of the hammer. Well, the thing of it is, though, is people wanted to see that. Well, yeah, it's not something people, a movie day, like that would just die if people, I mean, it's kind like of anything different. else. Anything will die media wise if you just don't engage with it. Right. Yeah. It'll die. Mainstream media is dying right now because it's they've had their limit their of the same media. regurgitated, <laughs> whatever, one sided, right? Whatever. Right. People are finally, I feel like we're finally hit the turning point where when you have people on the left that's turning on their own party right and mm -hmm. then you have people on the right that may have been you know maybe like the extremists for a hot minute like the you know trump fans or whatever they are like you know what he's not the best or whatever maybe they're right. starting to yeah. like kind of turn and both of both left and the right are being like what happened to the days when you could just like either like something or not like something like you why, why am i defined and I'm and now I'm going to break break it off into politics, but why am I defined <laughs> by my you know my political affiliation? Why why you know why do I have to be you know 
put into a box. No, I think right? that's the other weird part too is, yes. Yeah, so definitely for whatever reason, um, people want to put you in a box. They're like, are you um, left or are you right? Are you Democrat? Are you just like, no, I'm common sense. Yeah. Well, here's the just thing can, is, can I just be common sense and just intelligent? Even if you tell me that you're left leaning, in other words, you feel like you're more of like a, a, a you know, a liberal versus a Democrat. Why does that meaning the minute you use the term left, why do I throw you into people burning down, you know, uh, cities or, well. or believing everything that, you know, that the, the, that, you know, the Democrats say, or right, same yeah. thing is prime example is just because I say, I feel like I'm maybe more conservative. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make me some dude in Charlotte, like carrying a torch and being like, no, no, you know, it does whatever. Not. I mean, you know, so I'll just go and say it's like, uh, I didn't vote for Trump. Actually, I didn't vote for anybody, but yeah. at the same time, I, uh, because I, I follow, uh, financial markets, I yeah. understand. I realized that what Trump had done in that time period helped out, uh, the U S financially. And so that's when, that's why I would support his thinking and his ideas. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, when somebody starts bashing on Trump, which you know what, teach their own, that's fine. But I'll say something like, well, That's actually, why you know, he's turning away from hard, he, hard stances on those parties. He did a lot for our, our uh, country financially. Yeah. And I always hear the same kind of arguments like, well, he was stupid or they don't actually delve, see yeah. that part. of. And I, yeah, I, I fully we, we get talked it. about it's, this before is they didn't it's, actually it's, delve into like the policies. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Right? To, it's, it's like uh, and I can. I, I would you, like to say Biden has done something yeah. intelligent or smart for this country, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, <laughs> I haven't found. And it's not well, that I don't like him. And the thing of it, it is, has so nothing if, to do if with somebody that. Brings something to my attention that he has done that I feel like, you know, benefits. Again, I'm not left or right. Yeah. So right. if if he if he's brought something to my attention that I personally agree with, no, exactly. I'm okay with saying, hey. I he am did also. this, it's like, right? Okay, but so, it's not it's not a hill that I'm going to die on, right? Just yeah. because I agree with him on one thing doesn't mean I am now left leaning liberal, whatever you know, hard right liberal, I should say, or hard left or hard you know, or hard, I'm sorry, hard Actually, left liberal, know. hard it's right. Like, you know, you let's know. let's just get all get rid of all these terms. It's like common sense. Does this make sense for this country? That's exactly. Does this it, make man. sense for I mean, the people in this country? Yes or no. It's, you know, it's really not that in my mind is, and I know I, I way oversimplified it by saying that, but that's well, it's weird. Every, it everything is. in history prior to this, you know, last few elections, there's always been a huge majority of people that are kind of moderate or kind of in the middle. And the whole point of, of politicians is they've, they're the hard part of their jobs. If you were a Democrat, you don't have to work real hard if you have a really hardcore Democrat group you don't really have to work for them you are working for the people that are on the fence mm -hmm. right you're trying to sway people to your side so you're not defined they're the the hard people to get was the moderates because you wanted to tell them something that they wanted to hear to get them to vote for you right somehow somewhere along like the last couple of elections there's been like a hard divide down the center where the minute you say well I, you know i'm you know, I kind of agree with like, you know, what Obama's saying. Oh, well, you are now you're lumped with the dudes burning, you know, <laughs> burning down cities. Right. Know, right? Or if That's you say, horrible. you know what? Everybody I've ever known has been a Democrat. But I kind of I kind of agree with, you know, even though Trump's, you know, spewing all this stuff, I kind of at the gas pump or, you know, whatever. Like, I feel like he's, you know, doing something for the economy. Now all your, you know, so-called liberal friends are being like, oh my God, you're a racist. You're, so they lump them, like hard lump them into these yeah. super extreme versions of the left or right. Guess what? There's a whole lot more of us out there that are in this gray area. Those are fringes. They used to call them fringe elements of the Dem Democratic Party, the fringe elements. Well, unfortunately, right? I think when or, you say the word fringe now, it seems they'll... Fringe means extreme, unfortunately. Yeah. 
in a lot of people's mind, um, which it shouldn't mean extreme, which I yeah. understand fringe. Well, means I use the, the outside term fringe part is they are extreme, is, but well, the fringe element meaning at the very edges that are super hard left or super hard right that just drinks the. Oh, you know, I see what you're saying. You, you see what I'm saying? That's the fringes that yeah. I'm talking about. Everybody else falls in the center. They may be more apt to like they're more, you know, apt to go liberal as far as like their policies and whatnot. And you have other people that are more apt to. And most of that is based off of your day to day. Right. Yeah. You're probably going to be more uh, if you're more blue collar, you're probably going to give you more Republican. Right. But that's not necessarily true because some people, they basically they they vote Democrat because Democrats used to run the the um used to run the uh what do you call it the oh uh jimmy hoffa the they used to run the unions oh unions right well, okay so why do we need unions in this day and age i i mean honestly i don't think anybody well, could possibly tell you unions had unions for, had a they had a they had a strong basis back when employers wasn't they had skilled laborers well no so they well they had skilled laborers that were taught a skill that were a very specific skill and should have been paid a little bit more than the problem with like, it, it was back in the day where you go to work at a factory, you get taught a skill of, uh, you know, machining and or whatever for a certain job mm -hmm. and you're getting paid the same as the person at McDonald's. Well, no, well. And companies would take advantage of that and pay you the same is what you were getting paid at a non-skilled job. So unions came in and basically said, hey, no, you deserve a little bit more because you've been here because of the apprenticeship program for, you know, said uh, machining job takes five years and you've been here five years. You've learned this stuff. You're now like a, you're no longer apprentice. You're like a whatever. Like well, you, you've learned a skill. I may have possibly looked back further than you have. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, which I could be corrected, I may be, maybe I'm way off, but uh, the union was created for back in wartime era when people were being mistreated at their jobs. Yeah. Was for human rights in a workplace. Oh, yeah. It had That's... nothing to do with um, actually your skill level. It had yeah. to do with, all right, well, um, because we have to make X amount of bombs, then uh, my, my employer, they want me to work. 24 hours and i can't stay awake 24 hours yeah it's, it's like a it's, it's like like unsafe a, yeah uh we're no longer in that era we've been out of that era for so long and i understand what you just said about yeah um i do that perspective that, because i came from a dad that was like a machinist and oh yeah all this yeah. kind of stuff and you know there are certain times in his maybe it paid a little bit more mm -hmm. or something than somebody that worked whatever right no, but no, I get he had a I, skilled trade. And the thing of it is, is like a lot the unions basically kept him from. Again, it was like a violation of of the. Of the company, you know, or of the business versus the workers. Well, I think it protected them because they came he came in and learned a skill and it protected them where they basically said, hey, I can get somebody else in here to do your job for half the money yeah. or whatever. And so the unions, you know, got together and did like a contract. So it was, it was still the same basic idea is they were protecting the workers from said businesses mm -hmm. that were using them up. They were, you know, they wouldn't pay them overtime. You know, they actually have union agreements that says, Hey, if we work any more than the, it's still to this day with, with, with railroads and like certain things like that or that are union jobs. Yeah. If you work any more than X amount of hours, Part of your union agreement says you will get, you know, the next however many days off or you will give you, you'll be paid, you know, time and a half for any hours over. And then any time you get any more hours over than that, then you're paid triple time or whatever it is. So it's a protection for employees. So I kind of get it. No, it is a protection, which I, yes, what you said, um, yeah. it's a protection. For Still employees. doing the same thing. I think it's just. Well, I don't, I don't believe it is. So how many companies have been shut down because of a uh, union? So I, I worked well, at, is, I worked in a company that was a yeah. uh, union. Yeah. Um, actually it was the uh, United uh, Steel Workers, whatever the hell that was, uh, auto workers, sorry, not still. 
Um, so I had to pay these union dues, which mm-hmm. were astronomical. Um, at the same time, too, there were people there. And this was the basis of what they got paid was how long they were there. It wasn't based yeah. on the quality of their work or what they actually did. I mean, literally, there were people that would, um, they could probably literally just come to work and sit in the uh, parking lot and smoke cigarettes all day long and Still not go in and do anything. Wage. Yeah. And they would get paid 40, 50 bucks an hour because of the union. And then you had people like me that would get paid two or three dollars um, an hour. And we had to go empty hot vats of cow chum. I'm making yeah. that up. But yeah. so it made it made zero sense. There was no reason the union wasn't doing anything for anybody except for collecting union dues yeah. in my well, mind. But at the same historically time, historically speaking, the part of the part of that went south when the mob got involved in in union, the Jimmy Hoffa's. And they organized and like whatever it was. It was originally, I think, for a good idea. But well, I think then uh, they started using th- essentially as extortion. Well, I think OSHA, OSHA yeah. took over that part of it. Yeah. So um, if OSHA actually did what OSHA is supposed to do and not try to tell people they have to get shots. <laughs> Sorry. But so if OSHA actually focused on uh, workplace safety, which is what the union originally was formed to do yeah. was workplace safety. There is no room or place for well because that. they have OSHA that's no longer a concern. So now they focus on job security. 